If Republicans are looking for a theme song, that one would work. That's exactly what House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says members of his own party are ready to do. Burn down the House. This is a whole new concept of individuals that just want to burn the whole place down. And it's not because they don't like what Democrats are doing. No, Republicans control the House. This is a Republican civil war, all out infighting. Listen to what Republicans are saying about fellow Republicans. These people can't define a win. They don't know how to take yes for an answer. Uh, it's a clown show. You keep running lunatics, you're going to be in this position. What we've done in our politics is create a situation where we're electing idiots. Wait until you see who there. Mitt Romney was talking the, about the, here. It, look, he's a sick puppy. Uh, sick puppy. He, he, shouldn't be, he shouldn't be there. The infighting has gotten so bad amongst Republicans that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy uh, was defeated twice on votes he called just to debate issues. I don't understand why anybody votes against bringing the idea and having the debate. Oh, don't feel too badly for him, though. He's well-versed in not having the votes. It took him 15 votes to even get the job. Losing 14 votes in a row this January to become Speaker in a week of chaos on the House floor. The House is not in order. Winning on the 15th vote, lucky 15. It's the first time in 100 years the Speaker of the House has not been elected on the first vote. They get elected on the first vote because the reason they're becoming speaker is their party has taken control of the House. All they have to do is get enough members of their own party to support them. Not this Republican Party. Adding insult to injury, Nancy Pelosi got to watch it all unfold in person. Uh, she's won the speakership twice on the first vote. And when Nancy Pelosi starts reminiscing about the good old days of the Republican Party and how great they were, you know we're in trouble. Take back the Republican Party. It's a great party. It's done great things mm -hmm. for our country. Great leadership over time. How, don't let it be turned into a cult, to a thug, in my view. Years of Republicans compromising their own principles for raw power have finally caught up with them. Republicans have turned a blind eye to candidates they knew were a problem, people they knew they shouldn't be supporting. Because regaining the majority, retaking the House, Getting the majority in the Senate was more important. And it has been actually proven effective some of the time. It's how the Republicans got their Supreme Court. Turning a blind eye to bad candidates like Roy Moore. Remember him? He was the one running for Senate down in Alabama. The one who was accused of sexually assaulting underage girls. As young as 14. After the sexual assault allegations, many national uh, Republicans started pulling their support. They didn't want to be associated with that. That was, that was a bridge too far, right? Sex with underage girls. Rape. Fine for Donald Trump. A week before the election is when he decided to endorse him. A week before, after all of this had come out. Because winning a Republican seat was the most important thing. Winning that Republican Senate seat was more important than who sat in it. And what they stood for, what they represented, didn't matter. Power. He lost that race to a Democrat. Do you know how bad you have to be to lose to a Democrat in Alabama these days? And my personal favorite, you have to go a little further back, 2010, Christine O'Donnell running for Senate in Delaware. I'm not a witch. I'm nothing you've heard. I'm you. When you need a commercial that has to start by convincing people you're not a witch, things aren't going well. She did not win either. But some of those fringe candidates did get elected, and that's what we are stuck with now in the House. Republicans were able to regain the House majority, but they did it by a thin margin. Only nine seats. They didn't win as many seats as they thought they were going to win. Unfortunately, because by supporting all these fringe candidates, it turned off a lot of voters, too. Impression of many of the people in our party and leadership roles is that they're involved in chaos, negativity, excessive attacks. It frightened uh, independent and moderate Republican voters. A nine seat majority currently in the House for Republicans. And that sounds better than it is because they can only afford to lose four votes, four votes. That means four Republicans can disagree for any reason. They don't have to agree with each other, just four different reasons. Four Republicans, if they don't support something, they can grind the House to a halt. And Speaker McCarthy is then left with the decision. Does he bow to their wishes and weaken his own position even further? Uh, he's already clearly not respected by his conference. Or does he moderate the policy positions, maybe you know, to bring some liberals on board and bring Democrats on board? Then what does that do to some of the other people on the far right who are supporting the bill? Are they gonna stick around? So you have this situation where the House of Representatives is almost ungovernable, all because of lunatics and idiots, in Republicans' own words. I hate to uh, put names in their mouths for them, but I think these ones are pretty safe bets here. Uh, let's just pick four, just so we see what we're dealing with here. Uh, we got Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. 
They're the hecklers from the State of the Union. Remember them? Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia is a supporter of QAnon, the conspiracy group. Thinks all Chinese people should be kicked out of America. They got to go. All of them. And she proposes a national divorce of red states and blue states. Never mind that there's a lot of blue cities in red states and red areas of blue states. She hasn't said how that's going to work, but I wouldn't push for details. Although maybe we should because she's rumored as a potential vice presidential candidate for President Trump. So then there's Lauren Boebert, a gun-toting, born-again Christian from Colorado who wants to eliminate the Department of Education and has called her Muslim colleagues the Jihad Squad. You'd think Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert would be good friends. Gosh, they have a lot in common. Marjorie Taylor Greene reportedly called Lauren Boebert a little bitch on the House floor. That is a report that Greene later confirmed as impressively correct. And that brings us to Matt Gates, uh, who is investigated for child sex trafficking of a 17-year-old. Across state lines, uh, he may have paid her, there may have been drugs involved, all things he denies. He's being called the shadow speaker, the one standing in the way of Kevin McCarthy from actually running the House of Representatives, gladly exploiting this four-member ability to hold the government hostage. Our fourth lunatic and idiot, and those are terms I do not use lightly with members of Congress, by the way, uh, but Republicans have said this about their own members. So we're starting to get into objective truths here. Uh, our fourth lunatic and idiot, I'm gonna play it safe though, and I know you will agree with me, George Santos. Yep, you know the one, the, the liar who lied about virtually everything, everything to get elected. I mean, his entire resume was a lie. His education was a lie. His own religion, he said he's Jewish, was a lie. Mitt Romney. Saw him at the State of the Union trying to make his way up to shake hands with the president. He lost it. He said, you shouldn't be here. You are an embarrassment. Walks right up to him on the House floor as cameras are rolling. He shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't be in the, in the it, look, he's a sick puppy. I don't think he ought to be in Congress and he certainly shouldn't be in the aisle trying to shake the hand of the president of the United States and dignitaries coming in. It's an embarrassment. This is what he tweeted after. You'll never be president. Like, grow up. Why is he still there? The answer is simple, and it's that Republicans need his vote. They need his seat. McCarthy is already having a hard time uh, keeping up with the Fab Four over here. Imagine if he loses Santos, who has been supporting uh, most of the Speaker's votes, of course, because the Speaker is the one who controls his destiny. And he's left with the three amigos and an even harder time getting anything passed or done. Now, the old guard know they have a problem. When I was teaching law school, I learned and, and taught certain constitutional principles. When Marjorie Taylor Greene was teaching CrossFit, she learned a whole different set of values, evidently. Mitt Romney calls himself part of the wise wing of the party, and he predicts they will have a resurgence. He just doesn't know when, and he's not sticking around to find out. He's not running for re-election in two years. Uh, the reason he gave was to make way for the new generation. In politics, there's always, always two reasons anyone does things, at least two reasons. Uh, the reason they say, and then the real reason. In Mitt Romney's case, he turns out to be, I think, pretty honest. So he or she verbalizes both reasons. This is probably the more accurate one. My wing of the party talks about policy and about issues that will make a difference to the lives of the American people. The uh, Trump wing of the party uh, talks about resentments of various kinds and getting even and, and settling scores. My party is only going to be successful getting young people to vote for us if we're talking about the future. There is one person in charge of the Republican Party right now, and his name is Donald Trump. This is not someone who has shown interest in joining, bringing people together and creating consensus. In fact, he is the person behind a lot of the dissent that we are seeing currently in the House. Donald Trump, he's coaching them. These are all Trump supporters, all four of them. He's the one telling them, obstruct, shut down the government. Don't make any compromises, get everything. And if you don't get everything you want, then shut it down. Unless you get everything, nobody gets everything. The idea that we're going to shut the government down when we don't control the Senate, we don't control the White House, it's a stupidity. So there you have it. You have a Republican Party in disarray. You have a leader who's not really interested in consensus and bringing the party together and strength going forward. Uh, he's interested in getting himself elected. Uh, everyone else be damned. And he's going to be on trial anyway. He's going to be busy. Liz Cheney, who made the uh, idiots comment at the top, we're electing idiots. She was the congresswoman from Wyoming, and she got defeated, defeated by a Republican in the primary. Someone who ran further to the right of her, who supported Trump, and Liz Cheney had had enough and started to speak out against Trump. No one has ever questioned Liz Cheney's conservative credentials, uh, but it wasn't good enough for the Trumpers who said, if you don't support him, then you're out of here. And that is what all of the lawmakers on the Republican side fear right now. I say this to my Republican colleagues. 
who are defending the indefensible. There will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. The Republican Party is in an all-out civil war, a battle for the soul of the GOP. The Grand Old Party, that's what that stands for, Grand Old Party. I think it's safe to say that's dead. And now the question is, what is the future of the Republican Party? And will it continue to exist at all?